Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the August 17th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Steve e. Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. And today, you and I, well, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what the bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful your presence here but more important than that that's this during this next 60 minutes i'm here to serve you so feel free to pick up that phone you can dial on in at 877-927-6648 if you can't dial in well we've got you covered there too but send an email early send it to steve at tfnn.com and inside that subject heading if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question of course in our tiger's den any ping will do so let's go ahead and get this show started on terrific tuesday of course this is tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, all the U.S. indices trading lower. Dow's off 460, S&P 55, NASDAQ 207, Russell 45. Yes, let's skip. Let's skip. Let's skip that. You can see it on my screen. The key is, and the question is, what we want to understand is, hey, where is support? Right? Is support being broken? So let's begin going through that process out here. Let's begin by taking a look at the four equity future contracts out here. And here what we've got on our screen, with the exception of the Russell 2000, are just simply the daily profiles. And as we take a look at the ES Mini, that's in your left-hand panel up here, maybe what I'll do is I'll just turn price off just for a moment. So give me a moment here. And then it'll just be a little bit easier, maybe more visible for you to take a look at where that new profile's at. So there you go. You can see a brand new profile. Now, just like yesterday, when there was a new profile that was forming, we couldn't get confirmation of it until 6 o'clock. That doesn't mean that the data that's here isn't worthwhile. It is. We're using Stevie's Advanced Doppler tool. So, uh, but right now, what we know, and this is shifted around, but right now as we speak, there's support at 44.18. If you were to ask me, based upon this profile, where is it that the ES Mini on any kind of natural pullback should find support? The answer would be 44.18. So we'll put price back up on the screen, and where are we trading at? 44.20. So in the case of the ES Mini right now, support is held. We can do the same thing with the Dow, or the NQ, I should say, although I don't really need to turn price off there. Uh, you can see that price yesterday and today, same thing consolidation. Remember we talked about when those new profiles were forming, how they were confirming for us a consolidation market? That's where we're at right now. And remember, that's always where you've got something good for the bulls and something good for the bears. This is an intraday bonanza out there. And so if you take a look at the NQ, it uh, doesn't mean that price can't break through it, but we've got to go with what we have right now. What we have right now is all price is done inside the NQ is pull back to test support. Now, we've got to go take a look at the intraday charts to see if there's some bottoming signals there, especially for those that are short. But if you are short, don't ignore the bottom of these profiles where we have support. If we go take a look at the Dow equity, if you, I mean, you can do whatever you want to, but you're playing with danger by doing that. This is giving you a competitive edge. If we take a look at the Dow, it has a new market profile that is also shifting out here. It needs to close below 34,949 to even suggest some type of uh, short-term change in trend. So the Dow's not back there. If you take a look at the so-called weak link out here, all the weak link is done. That's Russell 2000. is pulled back into two levels of support. The range of its bullish structure daily profile, that's at 2136 to 2155. But what I also have out here is the bottom of its weekly profile. And that is where price found support. And that was at 2149. So I want you to look at these charts. I want you to memorize these numbers out here because they are going to assist you with interpreting what the market is communicating to us. 
And if you want to know what that interpretation is as of 11 in the afternoon, it is nothing more than the ES and the NQ pulling back to test support. The Dow hasn't even been able to get all the way back down to support, but the Russell, in essence, has done. That's all that's going on inside the market as we speak at the moment. Now, there's additional things out here that we've got to pay attention to. One of those additional things is the spot volatility index. Right now, the spot volatility index is trading out at 1901. It's up $2.89. More importantly, it is a 17, 18% one day rate of change. Why is that important? Because what we do is we take a look at this chart here. The top of the chart is the S&P 500. The bottom of the chart is the one-day rate of change of the spot volatilities, and that's the uh, panel that's just above it. So what do we know? Well, what I like to do is I like to pay attention to those one-day rates of change above plus 10% or below minus 10%. Why? Above plus 10% says we have a bounce or bottom on the following session out there. Those are the blue arrows that are on my screen. You think it isn't so or can't be so? I guarantee you uh, the sentiment that was going on on the day of July 27th as the S&P was pulling back and the spot politics was going crazy. It had a one-day rate of change, by the way, of 10.13%. Everybody thought the sky was falling and that was the end of it. Was that the end of it or was that a bounce or a bottom signal? If it happened before and it's happened many times before, many hundreds of times before this tool where you get that one day rate of change. Now, you have to put that together with the equity future contracts out here. So let me change screens. Give me a moment to to pull this off. Let's go to the... We're just going to go to the 30-minute chart out here. This way I can show you how to put this together come the end of the uh, trading session. And that's assuming that you've got a one-day rate of change above plus 10%. No guarantee that that will happen. But if we do, what you'd want to do is you'd want to go take a look at the first place that I would start. Oh, what did I do? I went to the wrong screen. Sorry about that. So that's the daily time frame. And what we really want out here is we want the – let me see if this is it. Did I do it again? Son of a gun. Stevie, that's that's got to be it. That's that COVID thing. It's got you all confused. I can't figure out which one is my screen out here. So I'll, let's try this one. There you go. So now you've got the 30 minute time frame charts. And that's where I would just simply suggest that you start. Let's assume that this was four o'clock and you were saying, hey, Steve, oh, give me some type of feel for whether we're going to have a bounce or bottom. What we would be looking for are bottoming signals on these equity future contracts, preferably all four of them, to give us some kind of synergy. Well, if we take a look at the ES Mini right now, as that was pulling back into support of that bottom of the profile, you see that that was forming bar number eight of a TD9 count, let alone I've got wave number seven, that's letter G out there. Both of those, either of those, can be bottoms. That's what you would be looking for. Now, it's only 114. It's not four o'clock. So what do we expect or anticipate? I'd expect a bit of a bounce, and I'd say the ES Mini should bounce up to about the 4436 level. That's its oscillator and change line. You can see how the oscillator and change line has acted as resistance all day long. No reason to think that it shouldn't do it again. So watch a bounce. We're at 44.23. Watch that 44.36. Hey, was the bottom of that profile important or not? I would say yes. And again, take a look at the NQ. What do you have out there? Rhodes Mintum Indicator signal. You've got a TD9 count pattern out there. In the Russell 2000, you've got a Rhodes Mintum Indicator signal. Those are what you'd be looking for come 4 o'clock that spot volatility has a one-day rate of change greater than plus 10%. Be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019 finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right. 
information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So one last thing to take a look at in the equity markets before we start looking at uh, requests that have come in. Uh, this is the New York Stock Exchange, and the uh, center panel is the advanced decline oscillator. The advanced decline oscillator is the difference between the 39 and 19, in this case here it's a daily time frame chart, the day, uh, 39 and 19 ex uh, uh, exponential moving average. Uh, of the advanced decline line. So that's what the advanced decline oscillator is. Now, it's a cool tool. One of the cool elements about it are when price gets the, uh, the oscillator, that is, down to the minus 150 level or to the plus 150. So we got the plus 10% in the VIX or the minus 10% in the VIX. With the, excuse me. <coughs> the advanced decline oscillator, we're looking at the plus 150, minus 150. Now, price right now, or the oscillator reading, is 127, minus 127. <coughs> When you get to minus 150, and it wouldn't take too much to really do that uh, come day's end, depending on how the market uh, trades, <laughs> you're in oversold territory. So put that together with the one-day rate of change in spot volatility index. Watch those support levels on the daily time frame for those profiles. That's how you really put the what the market is communicating to you and I at least right now as of 119 in the afternoon. So let's go get to some of our questions out here. We had a question, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> inside the Tiger's Den to take a look at ticker symbol XL. So give me a moment to get to, uh, <coughs> to get to that. X, <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that, don't worry, I've got uh, liquids here. We can consume those in a moment if we need to. So XL is, and the question is what? The question is, questions and comments, bargain hunting, bottom fishing out there. Well, uh, this is certainly uh, at a bottom as far as every shareholder is concerned uh the actual low on this instrument is five dollars and 42 cents it's trading at 553 right now it's below profiles daily weekly there's not enough data from a monthly standpoint so let's pull over stevie's other charts out here uh james and uh, see what we can see on a daily time frame we're looking for some type of bottom signal we don't have it now i say we don't have it it is in wave number seven, that is letter G. The only way that gets confirmed is with a higher low. So the earliest that that would be confirmed would be tomorrow. So it does have the potential for a bottom signal. It's not the strongest of uh, signals, but it's a signal uh, nonetheless. Uh, would I go bottom fishing here? No, you know, it'd be, Jimmy, it'd be the same routine. Let's say that this were, was a bottom signal, wave number, wave number seven, letter G. 
Then what you and I do is we go over the short-term time frame charts and look for bottoms and we look for resistance levels to fail. Well, here is the 30-minute time frame chart. The 30-minute time frame chart shows the potential of a TD9 count. That's going to get negated, quite frankly, because of where price is trading right now. But what it will do is it will generate a Rhodes Mint indicator bottom, where it appears that way. It's got nine minutes to confirm that. It looks like enough of a bullish engulfing candle right now. That that's a likely case. And that's a likely case that says that price might bounce up to the 578 level. Uh, so that's showing with regard to wave number seven potentiality, if that's even a word out there. If we take a look at the 65 minute chart, you've got wave number nine. That's already been confirmed. So there would be a second type bottom out there. Let's look at the weekly chart. Weekly chart says you're in bar number eight of a TD9 count. You know, that's got some potential there. So, yeah, XL has some potential here for some type of a uh, lower a bottom out there. I wouldn't get married to it. Um, would I trade it right now? I'd sure rather trade this. I don't, you know, I don't even know what they do, what kind of sector it might be in, you know, for this to be, is this the just the worst of, of whatever it is inside a sector, Jim? I don't know. But you really should also try to understand what sector XL Fleet Corp is in and see what it is doing. But uh, yeah, it's showing some potential signs of a bottom. That's wave number seven in those short term time frame charts to focus on and pay attention to. So I hope that that helps you out with regard to your potential bargain hunting in uh, ticker symbol XL. Let's go to our next question. Next question coming in from Mike. Mike says, uh, hey, Steve, Bitcoin. All right. Uh, does your system indicate a TD9 top on August 13th on the daily time frame chart? Well, let's go find out uh, what Bitcoin says. Now, I'm going to go ahead. I've got the continuous contract up here. Uh, that's going to not change the TD9 counts out here. Your question specifically was about August 13th. And August 13th, no, the answer is no. Uh, August 13th, I show as bar number seven, uh, Mike. So what I do show is yesterday was bar number eight of a TD9 count. But this TD9 count, as we speak right now, is going to go away. It's going to vanish. If Bitcoin were to close here, which is at 45,570, in order for Bitcoin to have a TD9 count top today, price must close above 46,310. 46,310. Otherwise, the pattern gets negated. Now, price may be pulling back and is likely pulling back, Mike, to its oscillator and change line. And that's in the 43,909 area. Uh, your second, so you, that was your first question. We got that answered. The second is, what are the areas of support where I ought to consider adding to your position? So it, it really would have to be, let me do this here. I don't, I said the August contract. I don't know when you're trading Bitcoin here, which contract. It, I, I would think it should be August, BTC 08-21. So let's get, get, give me a second here. Now, the reason I'm changing over to this is because the profile should should change, may not change, but uh, I just wanted to try to give you the correct answer. All right, so, and here you don't even see, see now we're on the August contract and you don't even see a TD9 count pattern out there. So now that makes me ask the question, what is it that you're looking at, um, Mike? You didn't put it in here, and so I, I, I'd like to look at the exact same thing that you're looking at out here. But to answer your question here with regard to the August contract, your area to consider purchasing is between 43021 and 43822. Now, I would be doing the exact same things that James, Jimmy, and I just did when we took a look at XL, which is on a daily time frame. If you're coming into an area of support and you think that's a buy, you know, you want to come down to the short term time frames, like a 30 minute chart, and see some type of bottoming signal. If you're not seeing a bottoming signal on an intraday chart as price pulls back to a daily, or a weekly level of support out there, it's likely not going to hold. That's If you take a look at what we do out here, and we start looking at things like that, right, because we're just looking at patterns, and we know how these work out here, it just puts such a competitive edge in uh, your in your uh, bailiwick out there. So, uh, yeah, uh, your second question was, what are the areas of support? Uh, let me just put up September here real quickly. I'm sure you can trade the September contract for Bitcoin. So let's see what that uh, does, what that shows us at this stage here. And then we'll move on to the uh, second one, uh, Mike. So, but, you know, if you write me back, let me know exactly what it is that you're looking at. So that's the 30 minute chart. Sorry. Let's get over to the daily out here. Let's populate this. So the daily has a now this is September contract. Yesterday was bar number seven. Today we bar number eight. But even that's going to get negated as we speak right now. 
Um, so the answers to your question about the TD9 counts doesn't exist. I don't have it on my screen. Your buy area in the 43,000 area, 43079, that's on the September contract. So, Mike, I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. Next question coming in from Alan D. Alan says, Steve, the PFE chart is indicating a very long-term A to B equals CD breakout to the upside. So let's go take a look at PFE, Pfizer out here. And let's look at that long-term chart. And let's open this up. And it uh, looks like what we'll do is we'll come back to this chart. I'll wait till we uh, I'll wait till we get back so that you can see the patterns that we draw in here to assist Alan with regard to his questions, which we haven't even gone through just yet. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at uh, Pfizer. PFE is a ticker symbol. This is for Alan D. And Alan was talking about the larger picture first. And larger picture, he's got an A to B equals CD. I just went ahead and draw that, drew that in for you. The A point being the low from March of 2009. The B point being the high out here from December of 2018. Retracement into the March of uh, 2020 time frame. And you've got a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD that would give you a price projection of 59.46. The swing point that has volume at uh, 566 uh, million, uh, you should be passing it right now with 489. 
it, it's going to have the volume as long as price closes above 4405. So yeah, 5946 is a price projection. I'd say 6845 is also another price projection out there. Uh, we know that price is above its all-time high or, or its previous all-time high. That was all the way back in um, 2000, 1999. So it took uh, Pfizer quite a long uh, time to get back to its highs from 1999. Uh, maybe, um, Alan, maybe that's a signal don't get married to Pfizer out here. If it did it like that before, it could do it like that again. I know that's not your question, but there aren't a lot of charts that uh, you and I pull up on our screen right now to say, hey, it's just getting past the 1999 highs. That is, unless we're over taking a look at what's going on in the Nikkei or something along those lines out there. Okay, so what your question is, You'd like to add to the position. So where do you add to it? Well, if we take a look at our other profiles, that's the monthly chart, weekly and the daily, those profiles are so far down. We can't use that. A 42.13 would be on the daily time frame, and you're not going to uh, ride that down. I wouldn't believe you're going to ride that down to 42.13. So that's not going to be the level. So we've got to pull over our white background charts. And as we do that, what we're looking for is, well, first, where are we at on a daily time frame? Turns out today, Alan, is going to be bar number nine of a TD nine count. Now, we know that on a TD nine count, uh, that can uh, generate a high on bars nine or the bar following nine. So that high, short-term high, could take place tomorrow or could be taking place as we speak right now. We also have wave number seven present. I've got two of them. So, yeah, you've got some uh, signals of, of a uh, top. Now, in the past, each of those pullbacks have found support at or near the oscillator and change line. So that is currently printed at 47.63, and that would be our first target level. Now, just like Jimmy and I, just like, um, shoot, who was it before? Mike, I believe it was. We were, you know, what you want to do before you add to the position, just, you know, just because it pulls back the oscillator and change line does not necessarily mean that's the time to fire away. You've got to go look at what's going on in the short-term time frame charts. But to give you the target area right now, it's 47.64. Now, if price closes below the oscillator and change line, and that'll change as price moves up and down. So don't quote me on 47.64. I'm giving you the general area. But if price closes below the oscillator and change line, then that uh, starts. Then, then we need to see what kind of patterns are in play. As it's doing that, is it bar number five, six, seven, eight, one? Where, where are we at? And so, uh, but it would be the oscillator and change line. You'd see some type of signal on the short-term time frame, and that would where you that would where you would add that would where you would add to your Pfizer position out there. But be careful. What's on the weekly time frame chart out here? No signal there. Uh, no signal of a top. So it's really the daily. Same thing on the uh, monthly chart out here. So it's really the daily right now. So watch for a potential short-term top that's either happened or will happen by uh, tomorrow. And I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. The next question that's uh, coming in is from... Da, 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 da. Uh, oh, okay, we already, we already did that. That was uh, Michael, Michael W. Uh, to do. Can you please look at the 30-year treasury bond as a possible long? Hmm. You're, you're, you're late on that. Uh, let's take a look at... Let me get to here... Yeah, I mean, this is as good as anything out here. So here is the, well, here's the, here is the uh, September contract on the left-hand side. And I've got my synthetic version of the contract on the right-hand side. But you can see we've got a trend line. Uh, you got price getting back towards recent highs out here. So you're asking for a possible long. It would, your possible long would have to be so short-term out here. So I, I, I don't see that. Um, as we speak right now to take a long position. Now, I'm not saying that it's not going higher. I'm saying that you reward risk because you're back to prior swing points out here. Um, it's just not worth it. Now, let me pull over the daily, and I've got daily 10 and 30 minutes right out here for the 30-year. Uh, and on the 30-year for the daily time frame, um, nothing more to add to it but i'd really be hesitant if you're asking where is it you could have or should have taken a long position inside the 30 year treasury i'd say it would have been down at the 162 163 level uh, 163 was the bottom of a bullish structured profile. So that would have been an area. And of course, at that stage, you would have seen some type of bottoming signal going on on a short term type frame, like a 10 minute chart. Right now, you've got a TD9 count on a 10 minute chart. So we should see the 30 year treasury uh, pull back a bit. 
out here. That's on the 10 minute time frame. The 30 minute time frame, I don't have that same topping signal with prices right back into a resistance level. So I, I just don't see. Michael, the uh, the reward risk to take a log, log position inside the 30-year Treasury, which means which also means the TLT. I don't see uh, I don't see the reward risk to do that now. So I hope that that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. HD writes in, and HD says, "Would you please look at the OIH and the IWM? You're long, absolutely. So uh, let me get that's the Oil Service Holder Trust OIH." And uh, let me get back to the black background charts and let's get our three time frame market profiles. On a daily, we've got uh, price below the bottom of a bullish structured profile. So HD, this is gonna look like day number two below that. That's not good. Price is below the weekly pro shoot, a weekly profile just formed above price. That's not good. However, if there's a bastion of hope out here for the OIH, it's going to be the monthly profile. And this is a brand new monthly profile. It is bullish in structure. And this says if the OIH is going to find support, it should do it at 173.43. The actual low so far today, uh, is that today? Yeah, I think that's today, 173.38. So price here, HD, said, would I take a look at the OIH? It's possible that it is at support. Now, that's on a monthly chart. If the monthly chart's at support, what should the daily chart show us? Some kind of bottoming signal. So let's go up and up, open up the white background charts. What do we have out here? Well, turns out, HD, that price is moving lower, doing less relative energy as price pulls back to its breakout area. 173.71 is the TD9 breakout level for the OIH. Now, do you pull the trigger now? Absolutely not. You wait for some type of bullish reversal candle. If you get that, you then have a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator bottom, which should take price up to about the 196.78 level, maybe takes it beyond that. If I look at the weekly time frame chart for the OIH, what do we have? We've, we are in bar number eight of a TD9 count, and we know that bars number eight, nine, or the bar following nine can be a bottom. So the weekly says, hey, I might have a bottom out here. The daily says, I get a bullish reversal candle, I'll have a bottom. The monthly says I'm back at support, which is the bottom of its bullish structured profile. So HD, I think you're looking in the right place. Now you just need the right signal to confirm entry into your long OIH position. Thanks so much for writing in. We get back from this break. We'll go to our next question coming in from Michael P. And Michael wants to take a look at the QQQs. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Great. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. You got the Dow down 489, S&P's off 57, NASDAQ is off uh, 218. And uh, Michael's question is, is, should he be short the QQQ series ETF as we speak right now? So, Michael, I'm going to put up the Qs. We're going to take a look at the answer to your question. We're going to take a look at several different uh, charts. We're going to look at the Qs for you, and then we're going to go take a look at the NQs because that's really where you're going to get your information your answer from. Now, here we're taking a look at the uh, daily profiles. Well, we're looking at daily, weekly, and monthly. The only one that is uh, in play as we speak right now is the daily profile. So I'm going to ask you this question as you take a look at it. Price is sitting at 363.65 in the bottom of the daily profile. That's where buyers are at, or at 363.58. Is this the time to go short when price is pulled back to support? Now, I know that you don't have those profiles, so you, without the profiles, it would be difficult to answer that. I get that. You know, if we did some naked charting out here and I just simply, well, let's do some naked charting out here. And as we do that, we're just simply going to turn off. So give me a second here to turn off these uh, tools and uh, let's turn that off. Let's turn off this. Let's turn off this. And so now we're doing some naked charting. And if we're doing some naked charting out here, I don't know how you go ahead and understand or make a decision that uh, price is back at support. I couldn't do it. I mean, we could start taking a look at volume and things like that and the swing points or retracements, but we would have no idea we're at support. So we don't do a lot of naked charting here. We probably should start with naked charts and then just add the tools. Now it'd be a little bit easier for you to then understand the value and the importance of these tools out here. And you're seeing it right now. So this is actually, I'm not saying, saying to buy, but if you're asking me where are the buy the dipsters inside the QQQ series ETF, well, we already know that because we've got that competitive edge, that competitive advantage out here. Now, the current profile that's in play here, Mike, this formed above the prior profile. So from a trend standpoint and a profile standpoint, things are remain bullish. So the answer to the question is now the time to, if you wanted to sell the Qs, you do that at about between 367.54 and 369.91. Now, you might say, oh, come on, Steve-O, give me the exact price out there. Why are you giving me the range? The reason I give you the range is because it's a bearish structured profile and sellers reside in that range. If they don't give me right to the tick, but that would be the range to sell. Now, if the queues close below the bottom of this profile, then we may have some kind of short term change in trend. But at 145 in the afternoon, that is not the signal that we have. OK, that's one chart to look at. The second chart out here, Michael, in, is the NQs, and you can see the NQs have been consolidating with inside their daily profile, 14,919 to 15,136. Price is trading at 14,915 as we speak right now. So again, not a signal here to go ahead and take a short position. Now let's go over and take a look at my eight panel chart for the NQ. This will take me just a moment here to get this set up. Uh, uh, that's natural gas. We want the NQ. 
out here. So, okay, we, we got through step number one. Now let's try step number two, which is finding the right screen to share with you. Okay, so now we've got our eight panel chart out here. We begin by taking a look at the monthly time frame in the upper left. On a monthly basis, we're going to have bar number eight of a TD9 count, prices above its oscillator and change line. Maybe this is going to form a top uh, either this month, next month, or the month after. So that's August, September, October. Think October. Think October. Because that's likely what I believe the markets are communicating to you and I, is that instead of the markets moving lower into October, they're going to move higher into October. And it fits right in here with the narrative of the NQ on a monthly basis. Now, it doesn't fit into the narrative on a weekly basis. So weekly says, hey, Steve-O, nice try out here. But maybe uh, that's not going to happen. So as we expand out the weekly time frame, what we have is a TD9 count that is in play out here. You've also got a potential roads momentum indicator signal this month, but the month is not over. It's only the 17th, so I don't want to go there. And this would say if we do get a intermediate term top, you could see price pull all the way back to 13,462. Now, Michael's saying, wait a minute, Steve, oh, you told me not to go short. Exactly right. He told you not to go short. We're starting to explore the larger picture so that we can take a look at that and get that signal down. Uh, so knowing that that weekly has that potential a, a, well, a couple different tops out there. Uh, that's why we want to watch the daily time frame. We don't make that decision at 147 in the afternoon. On the daily time frame, there is a roads momentum indicator top, but that has led to nothing more than that sideways move that we have out here. Even if price gets below the bottom of this profile, there's still some more sideways is type action. Maybe price is just pulling back to 14786 or so. But uh, let's look at now the intraday time frame charts. What do we have out here? The 30 minute has a TD9 count bottom and a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Now that says, watch this morning's or this today's low, that low of 14,898. If price closes below that, that suggests a further move lower, Michael. On a 60 minute chart, it's triggered a Rhodes momentum indicator signal so far. On a 120 minute chart, you're in bar number eight of a TD9 count. By the way, the last time price was down here in the NQs, it was bar number eight that identified the bottom. Those say, no, not just yet, too early. And uh, the 240 and the uh, five-hour time frame chart are not um, providing us with any kind of bottom-ish type signal out there. So it's just the 30, the 60, and the 120, and then the daily back at the bottom of that profile. So to answer your question, is now the time to go short? Yeah, I can't. I can't tell you to go short when price is sitting at support out there. Um, so I hope that that helps you out with regard to the cues and what their message is to us. I suppose that it wouldn't hurt for you and I to go take a look at Apple, right? Because so let's take a look at one of the uh, one of the leading. Let's do that here. So give me a moment. Let's come back to our three time frame charts. Let's just see where Apple is trading at AAPL in relationship to its profiles. Apple is still above the top of the daily profile, Mike. So that would be another reason that I would be very cautious on trying to take a short position while the queues are sitting back at support. Now, maybe Apple gets back inside its daily profile. In order to do that, price would have to close below 149.01. Here, 149.12. So it very well may do that, but but it hasn't done that as we speak right now. So uh, so just sit tight. We've got a caller on the line. It's Ted in Boston. Uh, Ted, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? Hello. No, he's not on the phone. Oh, so okay. Oh, I see. Ah, oh, got it. Okay. Didn't want to say hello. Just called to say hello, but didn't want to say hello. Hello. And the question is, Ted from Boston is calling for short-term gold and the GDX, but is not able to stay on the phone. So in the case of the GDX, let's just put this up on the screen out here. The GDX, so I do that here? Um, I, I, you've got to sit tight. Uh, I, don't, don't, don't take a long trade in the GDX and the miners. And here's the reason I'm going to suggest that you don't do that. I'm just going to try to get back to, we, we took a look at this yesterday. The left-hand panel of the chart is gold which has had a really nice move off of the uh, lows from last Sunday, last Monday out there. In fact, the rate of change has been about a 3.5% rate of change since then. The rate of change over that same time period for the GDX is minus 0.65%. Ted from Boston, go back and study the charts of the GDX in gold. Go back and take a look at bottoms. Look at the rates of change. You will see that when the GDX, when the miners form a bottom, they outperform gold's rate of change by two or three, sometimes five to one. Not negative. 
So this just says we've got to be very cautious about the mining equities out here. They're not behaving the way that they should be, especially with gold having that nice bounce. She wrote with TFN. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air and water, without them life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at tfnn.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. On our screen is the energy sector, the XLE. This is for John in New York. John's question is, did the XLE bottom out? And at what price do you recommend buying it? So let's first answer his question. Did it did it form a bottom, a valid bottom? And the answer is yes. Let's go take a look at the bottom. It's an A to B equals CD pattern. The A point out here that I would use um, I would use the high from June 10th. I'd use the low from June 21st. I'd use the high from June 23rd. So you had a one to two A to B equals CD pattern. That generated a bottom signal on the trading day of July 21st. And the reason that it did that was because it generated that uh, uh, that rising window, that gap to the upside. That was the bullish reversal candle to confirm that bottom. So your question was, is there a did the XLE bottom? The answer is yes. Now. That bottom just led to kind of a measly rally out here. Of course, it's a measly rally because if we take a look at what uh, Lights We Crude has been doing recently, it's kind of had a measly rally too. So you've got Lights We Crude that is acting the way that it should, which is following along with regard to the XLE. As we take a look at the XLE, what we see here is a wide profile. 
The bottom of that profile where buyers are at, support, is 46.98. The center, which where buyers believe is fair value with inside the range, is also at 46.98. Your specific next question was, where do I recommend buying it? 46.98. And prices at 47.83. Now, I'm not saying you're going to get a ton of movement or anything out of here, but the you've got the bottom signal. Price comes back and tests a key level of support, the bottom of the profile. And at 47.14, that happens to be the bottom of its weekly profile. So there's a lot of support there. It's not a guarantee that it holds, but you want to be able to buy support. You want to be able to buy where the buyers reside. And that's why during this hour, you have the unfair competitive advantage of knowing where the buyers and sellers hang out. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Stay tuned. Two more great hours. I'll be back with you. Uh, assuming that everything goes well on wonderful Wednesday. Have a terrific Tuesday, folks. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people.